So I hope your day is going well today. I just wanted to share this video with you before you got into the Metformin video because there have been some updates since I cut that video. Metformin has long been used in the anti-aging community because it helps to prevent cancer and heart disease and it slows aging. It reverses aging. But there was a study that just came out a couple months ago that has cast doubt on exactly who should be taking metformin. It used to be everybody should take it. It was just a really good thing. It had a great safety profile. However, this recent study is, is causing people in the industry to pause and say, you know what, for a time, let's just give this to um, people who have prediabetes or diabetes. Let's don't give it to the individuals who are fine and don't have any blood sugar issues. So what I want to, before you say, oh, I don't have blood sugar issues, I don't even want to watch this, hang on, because that's the way I thought too. And there's another indicator for blood sugar that most people don't use that I, that caught my blood sugar problem and I just want you to know about it. So first of all, let me jump back over to here. So if you want to reverse aging, you've got to get good control of your blood sugar. You know, that's kind of a given. And in order to do that, you need to get a blood draw. And you can go to your doc if you have a good relationship with him or her. If it's super easy, he or she can order you a blood draw or a, a lab that you can take over to LabCorp. However, if it's just easier, you can go to a place I've started to turn to. It's called lifeextension.com. And let me take you there so that you can see what it is. So this is lifeextension.com. And if you go, let me, let me start up here. Okay, so if you go here and you want to come to their lab testing tab, so go to lab testing and then you want to, oops, lab testing. Then you want to come over here under lab test categories, you want to go to blood sugar. Okay, so when you go to blood sugar, scroll down. Now the neat thing about getting a lab from Life Extension is that it doesn't require a doctor. You just get to order it yourself and pay for it. The other neat thing about it is that you can get it drawn at LabCorp. You don't have to go hunt for a phlebotomist and then have to pay more money to get it drawn at some other lab so you get the phlebotomist. Let me tell you what you need to get to check your blood sugar. You need to get hemoglobin A1C and you can get that for $23. And then you need to come over here on the far right hand side and get your fasting glucose and insulin blood test and that's for 25 bucks. So those two, and make sure when you're checking out for the first time at Life Extension that you don't do what I did, and that is accidentally, it seems, at least with me, it seemed to default to ordering a lab draw kit. Well, if they send you a kit, you have to go find a phlebotomist. That's not what you want. You just want the lab order that you can get directly at LabCorp. And that lab order that you buy on here will show up in the LabCorp computer. So when you go to get your, your draw, you just go up to the front desk, you know, you've got your ID and you've checked in and it'll be right there under your name. However, I print out my lab order too, just in case, because you've gone over there, you've gone to the hassle. You don't want them to say, oh, I can't find it in the computer. So I also take a hard copy. So just make sure that you've got this set right. So you're not getting the lab kit. You're just, you're getting the actual lab order that you can get drawn directly at LabCorp. So that's life extension. And you're here are the fasting blood tests you'll need in order to determine if you have a blood sugar issue. The fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and hemoglobin A1C. So those are the typical three tests. However, here's the one that detected my blood sugar problems that I was completely unaware of for years. And if you don't get on top of it, then you're not going to be able to reverse aging from what I have learned. The, the test that helped me is the HOMA IR. And with these results, you can figure your HOMA I score, IR score with the, the insulin and the glucose results. Okay, so HOMA IR stands for Homeostatic Model Assessment of Insulin Resistance. And it is a mathematical model used to assess insulin resistance, which is a condition in which the body cells become resistant to the effects of insulin leading to high blood sugar levels. You all know that. But here is how to figure your HOMA IR with an online calculator. If you tried to do it yourself, you'd be taking your glucose and your insulin. You'd multiply those two together, divided by, I think it's 22.5, and that would give you your HOMA IR score. I find it's just easier to turn to 
a calculator online. And I turned to this Omni calculator. So I've got that tab open up here. And I had a 90 for my last glucose, fasting glucose test, and my an 8 for my insulin test. So that gives me a HOMA IR score of 1.78. All right. Let's go back to this. And let me scroll down a little bit. So what you want is a HOMA IR score of less than 2. If you have that and all your other labs are okay, your fasting insulin, glucose, and your hemoglobin A1C, way to go. You have nailed your blood sugar and you don't have a blood sugar issue. So therefore, this video that is going to follow is not for you right now. However, we've got another trial going on right now that may make metformin right for everybody once again, and doctors not being quite so cautious about um, prescribing it for people who do not have uh, a blood sugar problem. Now, if your blood sugar is over two, then this video is definitely for you and you'll want your blood sugar, I should say your HOMA IR is over two. You're going to want to talk to your doctor about whether or not metformin will be right for you. And chances are he or she may say yes because of its anti-aging properties and its ability to bring that HOMA IR back under two, which is where you want it. So I mentioned earlier that there's a test going on. And the test is right here. Metformin for everyone else. Um, it's been proposed as an anti-aging drug and a major clinical trial is about to get underway to test this idea once again. We've already had a lot of studies, but the latest ones have, have been cautious about prescribing it to people who do not have blood sugar issues. So the, the findings conflict, as I mentioned right there. So the study that's just started is called TAME, and it is targeting aging with metformin. And it's going to start soon. It was supposed to start in 2022, but it didn't quite start yet. Um, it'll start soon. It's going to run for the next six years. And so we're not going to have the results for that for quite a time. And I just wanted you to be aware. That's why doctors are pausing for people who do not have diabetes or prediabetes when it comes to metformin. I just wanted you to know about all that before you watch this next video. Have a great day, guys. Welcome back. I'm Jane Rogers. A question for you. If you could spend pennies a day to cut your risk of getting cancer, which if you live in America, your lifetime risk of being diagnosed with cancer is 40%, plus cut your risk of heart disease, frailty, depression, and dementia, and the bonus, you have a better opportunity to live longer in health. Would you want to learn more? That's what I said. Tell me some more. Today, the drug metformin is the most widely used medication for diabetes taken by mouth. Metformin is the third most commonly prescribed medication in the U.S., with more than 92 million prescriptions. It's on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. Its use dates to the 17th century, where extracts of the leaves of the French lilac which contain metformin-like compounds, were used to treat plague, fever, snake bites, and other ailments. But here is the kicker. Recently, scientists have discovered that metformin also slows aging and reduces the incidence of age-related diseases, whether you're diabetic or not. Studies show that diabetic individuals treated with metformin get a survival benefit, even when compared to non-diabetic controls. This is where you can we can speak to a lot of data because yeah. millions of people have taken metformin. And one of the most interesting things about it is you can do a retrospective study of tens of thousands of elderly people on metformin and ask, OK, their type 2 diabetes may be reduced and, and slowed down. But what about other diseases that they're susceptible to? Cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's frailty. And the answer that's quite remarkable is that metformin lowers the risk of all those other diseases. So when we control for everything else, what we see is that the people who are on metformin are living longer. Than people who don't have type 2 diabetes. It's a, a remarkable fact. Basically, what Dr. Sinclair said is echoed by Dr. Jared Campbell and others in a systemic review and analysis of the literature published in PubMed. Diabetics on metformin live longer than non-diabetics and other diabetics. Diabetics on metformin have less cancer than non-diabetics and other diabetics. 
diabetics on metformin have less cardiovascular disease than other diabetics, metformin may be able to extend health and lifespans in the general population. I found this to be an interesting comment about metformin at the Ninth Aging Research and Drug Discovery Meeting in Copenhagen. Metformin has been around long enough that it's had years to prove its safety record. But I just want to chime in that drugs like metformin, like SGLT2 and rapamycin, these are like three special cases in the sense that, yes, like we know because they've been given to you know, upwards of millions of people over a long period of time, what the full side effect profile will be, what the risks will be. So we can go there. We can go there more readily because metformin is affordable. It's over the counter in half the world. It's off patent. It's around $5 a month as a prescription in the United States. Metformin is like rapamycin when it comes to mimicking caloric restriction. It doesn't inhibit TOR, but it does slow down how mitochondria converts macronutrients into energy. This triggers AMPK to become activated, and that's an enzyme which responds during low energy levels. This process actually restores the mitochondria's function. So metformin ramps up mitochondrial activity, and it also has the potential of some weight loss. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot more people uh, taking metformin under the approval, with the approval of their physician. And part of it is education. Uh, when, typically when a, a doctor sees the evidence and there's an extensive literature, um, and sometimes it's the patient takes the information to the doctor or our book, uh, the doctor in, in most cases is convinced that this is worth the risk. Now, it's not risk-free. We should mention that metformin has some downsides. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is that it can cause lactic acidosis, which is uh, quite a severe condition. It can be fatal, so you have to be very careful there. But most people are fine on metformin. The, the biggest thing that happens to them is that they have an upset stomach, uh, lack of hunger, um, which can actually be a good thing uh, if you want to lose weight as well. I hope this was helpful to you. Have a great day.